Hi there, and welcome to this video on the dentistry interview, focusing on the topic of barriers to oral health. I'm Alice from Dentist Mind, where we go through the important topics of the dentistry interviews. Whichever university you're applying for, MMI or panel, we've got you covered. If you're new here, be sure to click that subscribe button. Whilst you're watching, please leave any comments below if you're unsure about anything. We've got helpful timestamps below for each part of the video to help guide you. The following video is a free sample of our full interview course, which you can buy by clicking on the link below in the description. So let's get started. Welcome to lesson two on dental conditions. This time we're going to have a look at the barriers to oral health. So this is an example question which you might get asked in one of your interviews. The question is relating to the barriers about accessing oral health and why some people don't get the dental care that they need. Over the next few slides, we'll go into some more detail on some of the factors to consider and what you might want to include in your answer if you do get asked this question. So the factors that can be considered when talking about access to oral health can be broken down into these categories. You've got language, culture, access, anxiety or fear and cost. So furthermore, these can be broken down into the perspective of both the patient and the dentist with different issues arising from each of these and we're going to go through these on the further slides. So when it comes to language, one of the barriers that a patient might face is not being able to build the rapport with the dentist. This might be because they speak a different language to the dentist, so they can't communicate with them in the same way that someone who speaks the same language might be able to. Another thing that might happen is that the relationship they get stops being mutualistic and instead becomes paternalistic. There might be increased anxiety at the dentist if the patient can't speak the same language because they can't be reassured in the same way that the dentist could reassure someone else. And furthermore, there might be a bit of a decrease in trust purely because of this barrier to communication. In terms of the dentist, they might have difficulty on obtaining valid consent from the patient if they can't understand what the patient is saying and the patient can't understand all aspects of the treatment because they don't understand what the dentist is saying and therefore the consent can't be valid unless the patient understands everything thoroughly. Another barrier in terms of the dentist is not taking the correct history or medical history in terms of drug history for example. This influences the treatment because the patient could be at risk if the dentist doesn't know about all of the drugs they're taking and their medical history as well. And furthermore, no rapport with a patient decreases trust, so the patient might not actually trust the dentist as much, and also increases the risk of legal proceedings having to happen as well. When it comes to cultural barriers, from a patient's perspective, you have different beliefs about healthcare. So different cultures think differently, and again, this might be different to the dentist's perspective about healthcare as well. This can be an issue that has to be overcome. Also, you have an issue of some cultures only wanting to see a dentist of the same gender as themselves. And this could be difficult if the practice doesn't have a dentist of the same gender or if they're not available for a long time and the patient needs an emergency appointment. Another issue is that migrant populations might be unfamiliar with the NHS. And so they don't understand the system in terms of the pricing, the appointments, the waiting list, any of this. So this would need to be explained to a patient thoroughly. In terms of dental factors to consider for the dentist when it comes to culture, it's a struggle to build rapport. So again, if there's cultural differences, it might be more difficult for the dentist to talk to the patient and build this comfortable communication that's necessary. Furthermore, you could get this issue of dentist shopping and looking around and only going to a dentist when they need one. So they're just going around looking for the best dentists and only ever go when they have an issue instead of how in the UK we want patients to go to a dentist regularly and for preventative care to be the main focus. Another cultural issue to consider would be a lack of sensitivity and empathy from a dentist for different cultures than their own. So the dentist might not understand some issues which are relevant to their patient if their patient has a different culture to them. And this is something a dentist needs to work on to understand how things will affect different people differently. And another cultural issue with a dentist is missed appointments. So for certain cultures, there may be reasons for missing an appointment, which the dentist might not have the same culture and therefore not have the same approach to. So for example, if a culture requires 
someone to rest on a certain day or pray at certain times, and this means they miss appointments, this can affect the patient-dentist relationship. When it comes to access, there are other barriers to oral care. So for the patient, it might be the location and the opening hours of the dental practice. Maybe they work nine to five and the practice is only open then and they can't miss work. So how are they going to access the dentist? This is something to consider. So if you did get asked a question about this in your interview, you can bring some of these points into it. Another factor to consider as the patient is bariatric chairs. So for some patients, they are too heavy for the chairs that are available in general dental practice. And if a patient's too heavy for the chair, then they can't be treated in that practice and may need to be referred to a hospital which has these chairs available for the patients. So again, this is an access barrier which is relevant to overweight patients. Another barrier would be car parking and lift access. So maybe a patient can't walk very far and the car parking's miles away and they can't walk up the stairs. So how are they going to get to the dentist as well? And also you've got waiting list times. So maybe a patient needs treatment, emergency treatment, and needs it straight away. Well, if there's a waiting list and they can't see the dentist until they've got through this waiting list process, how are they going to get this issue sorted? So again, this is a barrier relating to access. When it comes to the dentist perspective, you have dentist autonomy and attitude. So they might not want to undertake certain uh, procedures, for example, cosmetic treatments, because it's not necessarily in the best interest of the patient's oral health, despite it being what the patient wants. And also you have treatment that is out of scope for the clinician. So they might not be qualified to carry out this treatment and the patient's requesting it, but the dentist can't carry it out because they're not able to. So in this situation, the patient would need to be referred to someone who is qualified to do the treatment. Another barrier is anxiety or fear. So from a patient's perspective, they might be scared of the dentist. And this could either come from a previous bad experience or just from stories or the general attitude towards the dentist, which is something that really should be changed so that people don't fear the dentist and therefore won't miss appointments and should have better oral health in the long run. From a dentist's perspective, if they need to have longer appointments to manage these more difficult patients, this can then affect how many patients they can see in the day and therefore it's a barrier to providing oral care to more people. So another barrier to the access of oral care is the cost. From a patient's perspective, this could be that they can't afford the treatment or that they're scared of going to the dentist for fear of getting a large bill at the end of it, which they then can't pay. And this will prevent patients from seeing the dentist when they really should do. Furthermore, a patient might fall into the bracket of not being exempt from dental fees despite being on the threshold. So they might not be able to afford the dental fees, but they're not exempt from them. And for this reason, they choose not to go to the dentist. From the dentist perspective, stuff you could mention if you do get this question in an interview would be about transparency with pricing and treatment plans. So it's important to have dentists who properly explain to the patient everything that things might cost um, and clearly say to them, if you have this treatment, this is what it's going to cost. Um, and this is good in the sense that it shows patients everything to expect, uh, although it might contribute to patients not wanting to go for this fear of cost. So it's really important the dentist is transparent from the start and there's no unexpected bills that a patient ends up having to pay. Another point from the dentist's perspective is about having to stick to UDA bands if they are an NHS dentist. So if you do work for the NHS as a dentist, then everything is set for you in terms of the pricing and what you charge for certain treatments. So again, this is a barrier in the sense that you can't provide different things that cost different amounts as a dentist. You have to stick to UDAs if you're working for the NHS. So that was lesson two and lesson two is now complete. Hopefully you now understand a little bit more about the barriers to oral care and what might prevent someone from going to the dentist. So if you do get asked about this in your interview, you've got some information to talk about and explain to your interviewer why you think some people will avoid going for dental treatment. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe by clicking below and please leave a comment. Click here to continue watching our interview series and to unlock full access to 70 tutorials covering core interview topics, MMI mocks, top tips and more, click on the link in the description below.